Mr. Foreperson, has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, sir. And is the verdict unanimous? And has the four person, have you uh, signed the verdict form and marked it uh, in accordance with the verdict? With that record then, sir, I would ask that you hand the verdict uh, to the court attendant, please. At this time, Mr. Behina, I'm going to ask that you rise along with your attorneys, please. And I would ask that the court attendant read the jury's verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Christian Behina Rivera, guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. It, it was that simple. Now, uh, I've been listening a, a lot today on uh, social media, seeing people's reactions, and a lot of people were wondering, why did it take so long? This is such, a, such an easy case, such an obvious case. Well, it, it wasn't an exceedingly long deliberation. As a matter of fact, it was really quite average. Let me put up on the screen, because I do this usually during uh, deliberations, but uh, let you know how long deliberations take in, a, in an average case. For every day of trial, about one hour of deliberations. This was like a seven-day trial. We had seven hours of deliberations, and they delivered the verdict. Very, very average, folks. This was not exceedingly difficult for the jury. This wasn't a big battle inside that, that room. And it, wasn't, and it wasn't a quick verdict either. It was right, it was, it was right on. And, and this jury was able to see through his lies. I mean, when he got up there and testified, he basically admitted what he couldn't deny and then denied things that made him look guilty. That's, that was the tact. And the prosecutor did a great job of pointing out that he had years to prepare for that. He knew all the evidence in the case. He was in the courtroom listening to the testimony. So he knew where the, where the space was uh, in terms of where he could kind of change things up a little bit, but he knew certain things he had to admit and had to explain which was Molly Tibbetts in the trunk, and him at the cornfield with Molly Tibbetts. So um, the jury spoke, guilty, first-degree murder. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter was inside the courtroom and is in Davenport with more for us tonight. Vinny, it took a little more than seven hours for this jury of 12, seven men, five women, to reach a unanimous verdict for Christian Bahina Rivera. They agreed that he is guilty of first-degree murder in the death of Molly Tibbetts in July 2018. I was in the courtroom before the verdict was read. As the jurors entered the room, I'm always looking for who's looking towards the defendant, who's not looking towards the defendant. Here, the jury entered in two distinct groups. Three jurors entered first, and then several seconds went by before the remaining nine jurors entered the room. None of the jurors looked towards the defendant, even though he was looking towards the jurors as they walked in. The four person was a white man in his 30s. He handed over the verdict forms. When guilty was read, there was no overreaction from any of the jurors. But I did notice at that time, a lot of them began to stare sternly towards the defendant. There was one older woman who sat in the middle the entire trial. She was one of those consistent note takers. She sat back with her arms crossed and looked like disdain on her face when she was looking towards the defendant. And after Bahina Rivera was handcuffed and escorted away, his attorneys spoke to the media. Well, the decision to have him testify um, wasn't as difficult as a lot of people want to make it sound. I mean, we had a situation where a client gave a statement, um, and he had her DNA in the trunk, and he led him to the body. That's all pretty incriminating evidence. Um, and from the very first day we met Mr. Behena, the story he uh, put forth on the stand uh, was exactly the version of the events he told us going back to August 2018. He had never varied from that version of the events, not one, not one detail. So um, we had to get something up there, and we thought the jury needed to hear directly from him, especially since they couldn't judge the credibility of him on the 
on the video since it was in Spanish. And uh, we had real issues with that interview and how it was conducted. So it, it really wasn't that difficult of a decision for us. With this verdict, it is clear that the jurors didn't buy Bahina Rivera's version of events that two masked men abducted him, made him drive his car as they murdered Molly Tibbetts. Each day at the courthouse, Molly's family was a constant presence inside a private overflow room across the hall from the courtroom. And after the verdict was read, the prosecutors visited that room and you could hear sounds of jubilation coming out of that room. The family celebrating this guilty verdict. And then the prosecutor spoke also to the media. I've not slept a full night. I don't think Bart has either. You know, uh, you know you're always worried uh, what a jury's going to think of this. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you should ask my, my wife about some of the phone calls we've had in this, my sleepless nights. But... Um, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to get through it. I mean, and it's, you know, you're thinking about it constantly. Um, but I would tell you, I mean, it's case is not about us. It's not about me. It's not about Bart. It's about Molly Tibbetts and, and her family is, uh, who we've been working with this whole time. They are the ones that have to live through this. And, you know, this is our job. You know, we'll be done with this case soon and we'll move to the next one. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, with the family and other people that are that close to it, I think you just got to keep in mind that, you know, they live with it forever. And, you know, we, we understand that. That's why we hope that in the end of the, you know, when these cases are over, we can bring a sense of justice to them, even though we would never have the ability to bring Molly back. Um, you know, we hope moving forward that they know the person that did this to her is going to be held fully accountable. With this guilty verdict, the judge did order a pre-sentencing investigation that is standard here in the state of Iowa. This investigation report will inform the judge of which prison to send Bahina Rivera to and any services that may be appropriate for him while he spends his time in prison. The date for sentencing, July 15th, but there is only one sentence. It's mandatory for a first-degree murder conviction, and that is life without the possibility of parole. Vinny, back to you. Chanley Pater in Davenport, Iowa. All right, so convicted. So I think we can say it now, right? Can we say it now? I mean, the, the story he told was ridiculous. It, it was ridiculous. I, I take a shower in my, in my trailer, and two guys walk in wearing sweaters in July. It's over 80 degrees. They're wearing sweaters and masks. And for some reason, this is the guy... They, they need him and his Chevy Malibu with the chrome wheels to, to drive around because they happen to know at that moment that Molly Tibbetts will be jogging through Brooklyn, Iowa. Are you kidding me? It's absurd. The whole thing's absurd. I'm glad the jury had common sense. All right. The prosecution and defense uh, both tried cases, uh, this case, very well. Uh, you, know, you could... The prosecutor did a real nice job of pointing all this out and putting things together. Uh, I loved his demeanor. Um, and the defense did what they have to do. I, I just want you to always remember this. They have to try these cases that way. That's their ethical obligation. If they don't, the system falls apart. You don't have to buy what they're selling, but you've got to let them attempt to do their job, which is, you know, defend their client uh, as hard as they can, and they did that. Let's take a listen to the prosecution and defense afterwards uh, reacting to this verdict. We respect the jury's verdict. They took a lot of time to, uh, to come to the verdict. Um, we wish it would have been different, of course, but they, uh, they certainly uh, came to their decision. We respect that decision. We'll explore our options now post-trial and uh, go from there. How difficult of a case was this from a defense perspective, considering he admitted to having Molly Tippett's body in his truck and the DNA was there? Very difficult, of course. I mean, anytime you have a, a client who gives a statement like he did, and um, the fact that there was uh, DNA evidence uh, in the trunk, and the fact that he led them to the body, I mean, it makes it extraordinarily difficult. Absolutely. Are, are you convinced that it was ever possible to find a jury? Do, do you believe they were impartial here? 
In this case, we're very pleased that the jury took the time that they did to look at the evidence and to deliberate in this case. You know, it would be impossible to find a jury that hadn't heard about this case, and that wouldn't matter even if we had the ability to leave the state of Iowa, we would, which we don't, but we wouldn't be able to find someone, uh, a, a group of people that haven't heard from this case. Uh, we. We're really pleased with the time that has been spent with jury selection and uh, the time that was given to this case. So we were disappointed with the outcome, but that's that's what it is. Just the story of Molly Tibbetts' abduction was a bizarre story in and of itself. Um, so what we thought is that whoever told the tale, whatever tale it was, had to sound credible. And um, the version of the events given by Mr. Behena, uh, it had to sound credible coming out of his mouth, whatever it was. So we were more concerned about how he appeared to a jury and how he sounded to a jury. And um, we didn't spend a whole lot of time preparing him. We wanted him to seem authentic uh, rather than coached. And uh, so we didn't spend, you know, an inordinate amount of time preparing him to testify. We. Uh, kind of just let him tell his story uh, in a very genuine fashion. So what you saw from him yesterday is really who he is. You, uh, you worked throughout the case, or the, throughout the trial, to point fingers towards uh, Mr. Jack, boyfriend. Is that, in your mind, the, the most likely? <sighs> his, he certainly gave us reason to suspect, okay? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people who, in this case whose stories didn't check out well enough for us. Um, and, and that was a problem for us. Uh, so can we tell you who, who did this? No. Um, we can tell you that getting to know Christian Behena, um, we are very surprised that he would be the kind of person that would commit a crime like this. He is... Um, nothing but a soft-spoken, respectful, kind person. And every person we have talked to in the last two and a half years who has had any interaction with this man echoes that. The big thing uh, is that he, he knew where the body was, and uh, that was a big piece of the corroboration to his story. If you guys remember, the, the leading us to the body uh, at, at 4.30 in the morning, part that was part of the pre-trial order um, that we couldn't bring that up initially, but once he took the stand, that kind of removed uh, all of that, and we were able to uh, uh, bring that up and did with him uh, on his cross-examination. So. so tell us about when he was on the stand. What was going through your mind? Well, it was, it was one of the possibilities that we discussed um, that could happen, um, but it was a little surprising, I guess, to me what actually was said completely inconsistent with the version that had come prior, um, had weaved in some of the details of the actual case, but again, because it, it wasn't the truth, there were pieces that didn't match up to what had actually happened. So, uh, you know, that's, that's tough sitting through a third version of what had happened when we think we uh, know what had happened based on our investigation. But uh, the jury heard that, and, and the jury made the right decision. Yeah, and just to anyone who feels like there's suspicion on Dalton Jack or that the defense, you know, tried to cast suspicion on him, you know, what do you say to those yeah. others? Dalton Jack did not do this, okay? Let's just put that out of everybody's mind, okay? He was working construction in Dubuque uh, with Jasper Construction. Dalton Jack did not do this, uh, did not commit this murder. Uh, he was raked across the coals at trial. I thought he actually handled himself pretty well. Um, he's, he, he didn't do it. He didn't behave like a person who did it. He was not anywhere near Brooklyn on July 18th of 2018. Um, he was distraught the next day. Uh, his, his boss ended up letting him go home because he could not find Molly. If somebody like that would have committed this crime, why would they want to go anywhere near Brooklyn, Iowa? Why would they ever want to go back? Why would they ever want to have it, you know, they would want to stay as far away from there as possible. 
Um, so yeah, put that out. I would like people to put it out of their minds. Dalton Jack didn't do this. He was vetted. I guarantee you he was vetted. That just like Agent Valletta uh, described at trial, we start with people who are closest to Molly. He was closest, well, other than maybe her immediate family, he was closest to her. He was interviewed. He was vetted. He was, they, they picked through his background. Some of that came out at trial. And I can tell you from looking at all this, he did not do this. The person that did it was convicted. So um, they want to make Dalton Jack another suspect. That's what they tried to do. It didn't work. Uh, and it didn't work because there's no evidence that supports it. That's why. That's an important point. Think about if, if this was the trial of Dalton Jack. There, was, there wouldn't even be enough to get an indictment in the case against him. Not even enough for an indictment, let alone uh, try to prove that he killed someone beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not even a reasonable explanation. It isn't. He's got an alibi. He was in Dubuque working. That's it. End of story. End of story. Um, but you heard the prosecutor, but people will still talk about it. And, and hopefully Dalton Jack can move on uh, with his life and, and not have this follow him. Uh, the fact of being accused of being a murderer. Um, so we'll see. Jury has spoken. That trial done. So what does that mean here at Court TV? We've got another trial lined up after this weekend when we come back. The next live trial on Court TV, we'll talk about it, involves a airline pilot accused of triple murder. Don't go anywhere.